I recently read The Energy Paradox by Dr. Stephen Gundry. Does this experience sound familiar? You sleep okay, have a healthy enough breakfast and lunch, but for some reason you lack energy. Consuming caffeine and so-called energy bars don't seem to do much either. You might think, I'm well-fed but underfueled. What the heck is going on? This is the energy paradox. The key to understanding the energy paradox is to focus on one key component of your biology, your mitochondria, or what many call the powerhouses of your cells. You have approximately 30 trillion cells in your body, and nearly every cell contains mitochondria. Some cells, like muscle and liver cells, contain up to 2,000 mitochondria. Think of it as having 2,000 energy workers at your disposal inside your cell power plants. These energy workers accept raw materials, glucose from carbs, amino acids from proteins, and fatty acids from fats, and then output ATP, your body's energy currency. The more ATP your mitochondria output, the more energy you enjoy during the day. So the question becomes, how should I eat to increase ATP? I discovered some fascinating answers after reading Dr. Gundry's book and broke them down into three key words, postbiotics, not probiotics, monomeals, and metabolic flexibility. First, postbiotics. You have over one trillion gut buddies, bacteria in your gut that convert the food you ingest into the nutrients you need. When your gut buddies get the fiber they like, they produce compounds called postbiotics. Postbiotics give the green light to your mitochondria to produce as much ATP as possible. Dr. Gundry says, if your mitochondria don't get the reaffirming postbiotic messages from the gut, they sense something may be wrong. And until the cause is figured out, they throttle back on energy production as a precautionary measure. It's kind of like seeing a fault light come up, indicating issues with your car's fuel line. Instead of pressing the pedal to the metal, you're going to slow down and conserve any gas you have. Thankfully, increasing the number of postbiotics your gut bacteria produce is quite straightforward. You just consume more prebiotic fiber. Here are five steps I've taken to up my prebiotic fiber intake. First, I take a supplement called psyllium husk powder. Second, I satisfy my sweet tooth by using chicory root powder as a sweetener instead of sugar. I use it to make my own dark chocolate by melting cocoa butter, adding cacao powder and my chicory root powder, and then putting it in the freezer to enjoy later. Third, I cook more recipes with onions and garlic, both rich with prebiotic fiber. Fourth, when I'm choosing a side dish to go with a meal, I opt for broccoli or cauliflower because they not only contain prebiotic fiber, they also help my gut produce a special compound called indole that enhances postbiotic production. And lastly, I now cook a large batch of sweet potatoes at the beginning of the week and then put them in the fridge to enjoy later. By cooking and cooling sweet potatoes before eating, I increase the amount of resistant starch in those potatoes, which my gut bacteria use to make postbiotics. Fun side note, one study showed that subjects on a 14-day water fast completely eliminated their hunger by simply consuming 100 calories of resistant starch each day. Keyword number two. Mono meals. Crazy sounding diets like the Duke Rice diet, which is almost purely carbohydrates, the keto diet, which is mostly fat, and the carnivore diet, which is mostly protein, all seem to be great at helping people lose weight, reverse diabetes, and restore their energy levels. These extreme diets all work for the same reason they make things easy on your mitochondria. Dr. Gundry says, the easier you make things on your mitochondria, and the less juggling they have to do between carbs, proteins, and fats, the better they restore their function. Sticking with one substrate, carbs, fat, or protein, makes your mitochondria really good at using that substrate. But mono diets are risky long-term, because the instant you get bored and deviate from a mono diet, your mitochondria have difficulty adjusting. It's like training workers to wrap one package one way for a year and then sending them a bunch of different packages to wrap. They'll find it hard to switch methods and create a huge backlog. Likewise, going off a prolonged mono diet creates a backlog in your mitochondria that results in low energy, weight gain, 
and insulin resistance. Luckily, you can benefit from the simplicity of a mono diet while keeping your mitochondria agile by just making your first meal every day a mono meal. For example, make your first meal either an egg white scramble with bacon, mostly protein, or an avocado with salt and olive oil, mostly fat, or sweet potato hash browns, mostly carbohydrate. By making your first meal mainly one substrate, carbs, protein, or fat, your mitochondria get really good at turning that meal into ATP. And the more ATP post-meal means the less likely you'll experience a post-meal energy dip. Keyword number three, metabolic flexibility. When given the option, your mitochondria prefer glucose. But if you haven't eaten for a while, or you're eating a low-carb, low-protein diet, and your muscles have used up their glucose reserves, then your mitochondria resort to using fatty acids. And this comes with a nice energy boost. Because when your mitochondria use fatty acids, they produce approximately 105 ATP, compared to the roughly 30 ATP from glucose. You also start creating ketones, which your brain uses as fuel. In other words, the more fat you can burn during the day, the more energy you enjoy. Now, you might be tempted to only eat fat, so you only burn fat. But remember, eating just one substrate is hard to sustain and risky for your metabolic health long term. Plus, when you eat mostly fat, you largely neglect your gut buddies by not giving them the fiber they need to make you feel great. That's why Dr. Guntry insists that the most sustainable way to maximize your daily energy is to be metabolically flexible and rapidly go between burning glucose for part of the day to fatty acids for part of the day. If you aren't diabetic, it takes about 10 to 12 hours of not eating for your body to transition from using readily available glucose to using free fatty acids as its primary fuel. So if you sleep for eight hours and hold off for two to four more hours, you will start getting the energy boost from burning fatty acids. This glucose to fatty acid changeover is rather uncomfortable at first. Most people grab a snack to deal with this discomfort. But if you embrace the discomfort of delaying your first meal, you will be rewarded with more energy. You'll also find that regular intermittent fasting stabilizes your blood sugar over time so you have fewer cravings while fasting. This week, start to enjoy the energy boost from intermittent fasting by gradually shrinking your feeding window. If you usually have your first snack around 8 a.m. and your last around 10 p.m., condense your feeding window by 30 minutes on both ends, one day at a time. Go from 8 to 10, to 8.30 to 9.30, to 9 to 9, 9.30 to 8.30, 10 to 8, 10.30 to 7.30, and 11 to 7 by day six. The goal is to get to an eight hour window that ends at least three hours before you go to sleep. Studies show that eight hours is the sweet spot because it provides the majority of the health benefits of intermittent fasting, like reduced insulin resistance, increased weight loss, and metabolic flexibility, while not being overly restrictive. So let's put this all together to build the optimal ATP eating protocol. Begin by delaying your first meal by 30 minutes a day until you start eating around lunch. This delay will train your mitochondria to switch from glucose to fatty acids on a dime so that you can enjoy more daily ATP, energy. When you start your feeding window, start it with a mono meal, a meal that's almost all protein, carbs, or fat. Then for each subsequent meal or snack, try to consume as much prebiotic fiber as possible so you create the postbiotics that ramp up your ATP production and make you feel fantastic during the day. That was the core message that I gathered from The Energy Paradox by Dr. Stephen Gundry. This book is packed with useful information and is really enjoyable to read. If you would like a one-page PDF summary of insights that I gathered from this book, just click the link below and I'd be happy to email it to you. If you already subscribed to the free Productivity Game email newsletter, this PDF is sitting in your inbox. If you like this video, please share it. And as always, thanks for watching and have yourself a productive week.